Okay, I might be a little bit late to the game on this, but a couple weeks ago I picked up this teeny tiny light meter from Ravini Labs. It's Raveni Labs. I keep saying Ravini in the video. It's Raveni. This super small thing is a fully functioning light meter and it can easily just slide onto the flash mount of pretty much any camera that's out there. And it's really nice for all these old film SLRs and range finders and TLRs, cameras that maybe don't have functioning light meters or inaccurate light meters at this point, or take old school batteries and stuff that you can't really find replacements for easily or cheaply. I started seeing this thing all over social media and on like photo websites and blogs and reviews all over the place. And I think that a lot of the attention that it got is well deserved. The Ravini meter is a result of an incredibly successful Kickstarter project from 2020 that caught a lot of attention after it raised over $100,000 for the project. When it comes to film related things, I'd much rather see a project like this get attention on Kickstarter in comparison to trash like this. Small light meters like this are by no means a brand new idea and for decades you could be able to get like little accessory light meters that could just mount onto cameras for you to use. But a solid little modern one that takes an easily accessible battery, a single LR44, and is so unobtrusive and easy to use definitely has a place on a lot of people's old cameras. I decided to pair my meter up with my Mamiya Universal, which is a camera that I like but I find myself not using very often often, primarily because I don't always have like an exposure meter on me, a handheld meter, I don't necessarily want to use an app on my phone, but when I'm shooting 6x9 medium format, I do want at least some reference a lot of the time. I ventured out the other day with my Mamiya Universal, a partial roll of Rolly Retro 400S, and a fresh roll of Cat Labs 80 black and white, along with this little cube mounted right on top of my camera. The Ravini meter is super easy to get the hang of with some simple buttons on top and a little display screen on the back for your exposure info. Hold down the power button for a couple of seconds to wake it up and we can cycle through our menu options. It has a huge range of film ISOs that you can select based on the film stock that you're shooting or if you're rating your film at something else. We can set the meter to either aperture priority or shutter priority. Aperture priority means we set the desired aperture that we want to shoot with and then the meter will tell us an appropriate shutter speed to use based on the light. Shutter priority is the opposite. We dial in our desired shutter speed to use and then the aperture changes is based on our lighting. This moving ball beside the reading indicates whether our exposure is right on target or if you'll be slightly overexposing or underexposing. still doing some manual exposure work here. Like the Ravini meter is a standalone accessory that can be used independently of a camera, or you can just slide it on top of the camera for like pretty easy reference. It in no way like interacts with your camera, syncs up or interfaces or anything like that to allow for like automatic exposure modes and anything on the camera itself. I know a lot of people out there are maybe using light meter apps for cell phones, and there are some solid ones out there. I have like a little one on my phone that I use for quick reference sometimes, but they're not always convenient and consistent and reliable. So if you are shooting often and you do want like a little easy to use reference that you can swap between whatever camera you're using, then I do really recommend picking up a standalone little meter like this that you can just use with things.
there's also a few other options here. You can dial in some exposure compensation if you want to have it meter for over or under exposing the film. And you can also have it tell you the exposure value, which is useful for a reading that you can transfer to a more detailed light meter. I found the Ravini meter to be very easy to incorporate into shooting and also I got exposures that were accurate and consistent. So uh, it's definitely works the, exactly the way that you would want it to work. It's also the kind of meter that works in the same way to one that you might be used to from like an SLR. It's metering for an overall average value of all the light that's in your scene. So it is always important to be thinking about what you're shooting, the film that's in your camera, how flexible your exposure can be. The meter is not gonna tell you how to take a good picture. It's going to tell you how to like accurately expose in a general sense. So this little thing is a hard recommend for me because it does exactly what I wanted it to do and it's great to pair up with cameras that I just maybe don't use as frequently. It takes away from having to deal with cameras that maybe have inaccurate exposure meters inside of them or trying to track down like expensive batteries and dealing with like something dying while you're maybe shooting. And it's so small, it's hard not to love this thing. I think that it's really great to pair up with medium format cameras or even just like pairing it up with a large format camera and just having something on hand for quick reference. If you're using an SLR or something normal that has a functioning meter that you've had consistent results with before, then you can probably forego having to pick up an accessory like this, but it definitely has its places for things that aren't working the way they should or lack some features. The little screen on the back is also super bright when you're outdoors, so it's not hard to read the information whenever you're metering in like direct sunlight or something like that. It's also got a really nice texture to it and it feels quality, although it is very, very light. So I do recommend maybe getting a little strap or a little lanyard or, or just something that makes it easier to keep track of or you can loop around part of your camera in case it falls off or something happens. Also the wide range of shutter speeds and apertures, film ISOs and compensation that you can dial in is great for different lenses, different environments and whatever you want to shoot. Like if you want something quick to reference if you're looking to do long exposures then this would come in really handy. You can also get some different little accessories for the mount that does make it more versatile for sure. Uh, so definitely check out the website because there are some different things over there that you can just pair up with the meter. You can get this strap to throw it on your wrist so then it looks like you have one of those super cool spy gear your uh, watches. Spy Gear Ultimate Spy Watch. Eight in one watch with a motion sensor. Also, it's made in Canada, just like me. So I ordered this thing and it showed up in like three days, which was super great because uh, I've had to order a lot of stuff from outside of the country and that gets super annoying a lot of the time. I order locally and support local labs when I can, but not everything is available all the time. I'm looking at you, fresh Polaroid film. And briefly talking about these shots here, I wanted to say that Rolly Retro 400S in medium format gave me a nice result. It's a little maybe less intense in comparison to when I was shooting it in 35 from my experience. It is like a higher contrast or like punchier film. So it has like a deepness to the contrast in the blacks here and everything. Cat Labs 80 is also something I've never shot before and I'll probably do a roll review with this roll sometime, but I did enjoy it. I like shooting low ISO stuff in medium format because the grain comes out so fine in relation to the size of the frame. Solid contrast here, but I feel like I got a wider range of mid-tones with this stuff against some of the rolly stuff. The Cat Lab stuff is usually pretty cheap as well, but the 80 ISO film isn't available in 35. They only do it in medium format and I believe sheet film. Cat Labs does put out a 320 ISO black and white film for 35 millimeter though if you're looking to shoot some of the Cat Lab stuff, but you're only shooting 35. Ravini Labs also has a super small spot meter uh, coming out or available or or up for pre-order as well. It was also a very successful Kickstarter project, something that can be incredibly useful for all those large format shooters out there, uh, which reminds me that I have to do a four x five film intro sometime soon. Stick around. You can check out the Ravini website in the description down below for more resources and to pick up one of these little guys for yourself. And it is currently available for 125 good old Canadian dollars. The only people that I wouldn't really recommend this to is probably, um, uh, babies, I guess. It's definitely a choking hazard. So if you're watching this and you're under three, then you're gonna wanna look elsewhere for like a little accessory to put on your Leica. Um, I 
would recommend something, but you're a baby that has a Leica, so yeah, you could probably figure it out. Thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, check down below for the link to the Ravini website to pick one of these guys up, as I said. Uh, also, hop over to uh, the Patreon if you want to support this channel, if you can. Uh, it helps keep this alive and keeps my spirits up. Also, information for Pro 8 if you're looking for all that Super 8 and 16 cinema film goodness, you can check out the uh, link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you soon.